Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Folks, I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Jesus is coming and Jesus is coming one day very, very, very soon. Folks, today I want to cover what King Charles just said in his opening remarks at the COP28 United Nations Climate Change uh, Conference, which is currently going on in Dubai. I want to talk about his opening remarks, what he just said, and why it is so significant in regards to end times Bible prophecy. Before I share the clip on what he just said, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about when I say COP28, COP refers to Conference of the Parties. So this is the United Nations Climate Change Conference. It's going to be the 28th one uh, since they started the Conference of the Parties. Uh, which again is being held currently in Dubai. It started on November 30th. It is going to end in a few days on December 12th of 2023. Anyways, at this year's United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP28, uh, this is the biggest one that's ever being held. Uh, you have, again, globalists, world leaders, elites that are in attendance, and I believe they said over 70,000 people were actually going to be in attendance at this year's COP28, United Nations Climate Change Conference. Um, but this year, it's all about, they have seven years to go to reach the SDG goals of Agenda 2030. So this year, it's all about, we need a imminent, imminent action by everybody in the world with drastic changes so we can reach the goals of Agenda 2030. Anyways, let me share with you part of King Charles' opening remarks, and then we're going to talk about it. The dangers are no longer distant risks. I have seen across the Commonwealth and beyond countless communities which are unable to withstand repeated shocks, whose lives and livelihoods are laid waste by climate change. Surely, real action is required to stem the growing toll of its most vulnerable victims. We are carrying out a vast, frightening experiment of changing every ecological condition all at once, at a pace that far outstrips nature's ability to cope. And we need to remember, too, that the indigenous worldview teaches us, teaches us that we are all connected, not only as human beings, but with all living things and all that sustains life. As part of this grand and sacred system, harmony with nature must be maintained. The earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. Wow. Did you hear what he just said, folks? The earth does not belong to us. We belong unto the earth. Hmm, that's very interesting because that's not what it says in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, again, the story of creation. When you go down to verse 26, we read the following. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So that makes it pretty clear that God did give the earth to us. The opposite of what King Charles just said there. What Charles is doing here is he's trying to destroy what God said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Basically, take the focus off of the creator and focus on the crea creation, which he wants the world to worship. This is all about Mother Earth worship. And hence in Charles's words, we belong to the earth because of evolution and not creation. It also reminds me of what the Apostle Paul records in the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 25 to 30. Let's read this together. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools 
and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto a corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies uh, between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. I mean, folks, what King Charles just said in his opening remarks at the COP28 summit, this is found in the pages of End Times Bible Prophecy. This is all about Mother Earth worship. This is all about control. Setting the stage for the coming seven-year tribulation period. Setting the stage for the tyrannical reign of the coming Antichrist. This is all about taking the focus off of the Creator and focus on the creation. Make no mistake about it, King Charles is playing a huge role in the coming empire of the Antichrist. They're talking about, oh, how the world's in peril right now. We need change right now, and we have seven years to do it, to reach the goals by uh, 2030 for Agenda 2030. And they're talking about imminent action, folks. So make no mistake about it, you're going to start seeing very quickly here these climate laws that are coming. Again, this is all about control, Mother Earth worship, and taking our focus off of uh, the creator and focusing on creation. The bottom line is this. If we continue to see the stage getting set up for the coming seven-year tribulation period, and we know the rapture of the church occurs first, how close are we to the rapture? I would say a lot closer than people realize. All I can tell you, if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world right now at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back and he's coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the light boat right here and right now. That light boat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. What do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin that, that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross, so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God, and our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. He was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross. So you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. Eternal torment, eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven and the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith in your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures and do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it, Jesus is coming and he's coming one day, very, very, very soon. Keep looking up, keep watching with me and God bless you all.